What is up, guys? Welcome back to Tidal Gardens. If you look at this tank, you might get the impression that it could use a little bit of cleaning because it has a very slight haze to it. Unfortunately, that is not the case of a little bit of algae or diatoms on the glass that could just be scraped off. What's going on here is a permanent etching of the glass called alkali glass corrosion. This corrosion continues for years until the panel is completely opaque, kind of like a frosted shower door. So why is this happening? Most people don't realize this, but glass isn't completely smooth. If you look at it under a microscope, there's all kinds of potholes in the surface and contaminants can fill these holes that then react chemically with the glass. This sort of corrosion is uncommon, very uncommon in fact, but it can happen in the presence of high pH, for the sake of argument, let's say around a pH of 9, and that might sound like a shockingly high pH, but I've seen it in tanks that go really hard on Kalkwasser, and also interestingly enough, tanks that have a lot of tridacna clams. Anyway, the other likely cause of this corrosion is if the tank was improperly manufactured. More on that in just a second. Let's start real quick with a primer on how float glass is made. Float glass is the most common type of glass because it is very flat on both sides. And obviously, that is a rather appealing quality. Glass manufacturers make it by taking molten glass and pouring it onto a bed of molten tin. The glass rests on top of the molten tin uniformly, thus making it flat. The glass is then slid off of the tin layer and allowed to cool, and that's basically how you get that nice big pane of glass. Note that there is a side of the glass that faces the tin, and a side of the glass that faces the air. The tin side gets a little bit of that tin incorporated into it. This happens to a greater degree on thicker pieces of glass, like three quarter inch glass, that has to rest on that tin longer. The absorption of tin into that quote unquote tin side, making it more at the risk of alkali glass corrosion. As a general practice, tank manufacturers want to build the tank with the tin side facing out and the air side facing in. There's even a way to test this. The tin side of the glass will glow if you shine a UV light at a 45 degree angle, while the air side will not glow. Still, during the manufacturing process, it's really easy to lose track of which side is which, and honestly, that's assuming that the manufacturer checked the glass in the first place. One manufacturer I spoke to goes out of their way to mark the inside and outside in big letters so that nobody can make that mistake during fabrication. But clearly, that did not happen in my tank here. Silver lining, I guess, lucky for me, that this pane of glass is on the short face of a peninsula farming tank, so that short face is smaller, and it's facing the back corner of my facility that, honestly, not too many people will really notice unless you're working here, right? Still, it's never a good thing to have happen. I'm just glad that it didn't happen on the main face of a show tank, which unfortunately happened to my friend Ryan's thousand gallon reef. I've showcased his tank a couple of times on this channel. And when I first saw his tank in 2019, it was crystal clear. Fast forward a couple of years later in 2021, and it had a noticeable haze. At the time, I was just absolutely heartbroken for him. I mean, it was, you could very easily tell the difference between that pain and the other two pains that were viewable. In the video that I made that year, I tried to minimize the effect of that haze and glass, but yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. When I spoke to him this year, 2023, he said the hazing got a great deal worse. I didn't get to see his tank scheduling things, but um, I can only imagine that it could have been looking like a shower door facing the living room. The damage to that main pane is permanent, and the only way to really fix this is to completely break down the tank, cut it apart, and install a new pane. For now, that's not something that he's looking to do. So yeah, he has like this incredible 1,000 gallon SPS reef, and it kind of has to be viewed from the utility room or top down. 
One thing worth noting is that Ryan's tank is low iron on that main pane, but regular glass on the other three sides. Kind of ironic, I know. The other sides were unaffected, making it seem like the low iron pane was somehow the culprit. I don't know the ins and outs of glass chemistry, but I think it might have more to do with the tin side in and out more than the fact that it was low iron. In my facility, I have literally a hundred or more panes of low iron glass, and this particular pane is the only one suffering from alkali corrosion. Granted, low iron is softer than regular glass, it scratches easier, it might be a combination of factors. The low iron, higher pH, tin side in out, a number of things. I can't say for certain. But anyhow guys, I wanted to make sure that you were aware of this phenomenon, and if you were ever in the market for a custom aquarium, this is one of those questions that you can pose to the manufacturer, so you end up getting the product that you were expecting. All right. That's it from here. Until next time, happy reefing.